Well, this is early in the morning of our first day, and we're sitting out here on the, on the back of the Lido deck, way up on top to where we're going to be eating breakfast very shortly. And it's a beautiful, lovely, lovely, warm, comfortable day. And there's Pat having coffee and enjoying the sun. And she's not um, having any food yet, but she will be in a little while. Where is The first coffee. First coffee. And what else? Uh, a lot of nice breakfast waiting for me inside. I have to go get it first, though. And are you having fun yet? Uh, I'm all wound up to be have fun. Okay. We're going to have fun later. Okay. We have a whole day's worth of activities. Very good. So the sky is blue. San Francisco is rainy, and we're happy to be here. I am too. Okay. So okay. now we are approaching Mina, Ma Morea. Morea, thank you. Morea. Where are we going to spend the whole day? Tomorrow will be Bora Bora, which you have heard of, Bora Bora. Well, and Morea, we're going to got a full day. We still go, we leave this boat at 9 o'clock and we come back at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Today, that's Today. right. Yes. And we're going to have all day activities with a barbecue and then we'll go wading and snorkeling and all kinds of things. Okay. And take us around the island. Okay, that's it then. Yeah. Have a good one for the rest all of the right. day. We'll see you later. We're now approaching Morea and we're getting ready to anchor. We see we can't dock because there are no docks for the ships. They're going to bring us in by tender. And here you're getting a little glimpse of the, some of the huts that are along the way. And you see there's quite a variety of them. And our tender is going to be landing someplace along here. And at the dock, we are met by these dan Moran dancers who are having their picture taken with one of the ladies on our boat. Notice the headdresses and the costumes. They're very, very elaborate. This is a map of where we're going. And you can see this, how windy and twisty this road is. Even though we're in a bus, it's not a big bus, but it's, a, it's still a bus. And many a times, the bus couldn't even make some of these turns in one thing. He had to back up and do it in two shots. And it's also a two-way, one-lane road. So when you meet somebody coming down the other way, somebody has to back up and make room for the person to pass. It was a beautiful experience that lasted about a half hour. Now that we are at the top of Mount Belvedere, we can see far and wide and see the view of the two bays from uh, Maria. The bay to the right is Cook's Bay, where you will see, in a minute, two sh uh, cruise ships. Our ship is moored to, in the bay to the left, which is called Opanaho. Now we have close-ups of the two ships in Cook's Bay. These ground views of the Opanahu Bay were taken earlier so we could see our ship, which is just around the horizon. And here we see the cone which hides our ship. Nearby the Belvedere are further cones which show the very ruggedness of volcanic activity on the island. It is now noontime and we're getting on a motorized catamaran which is going to take us out to a little deserted island for a special treat. And then we're going to show you some interesting sights along the way. And then we're going to be listening to ukulele music I don't know, at which they're playing for us for the whole trip out to there. Coming into view are some grass huts 
that are built out over the water, which a hotel at one time had avail made available to their guests for an overnight stay. Wouldn't you like to stay in one of those? On the land side of the ship is a group of huts that were built by the hotel for their workers. Now we're coming into a group of similar huts, but these are houses privately owned on the banks of the uh, bay over here. And of course, if you have the money, you can buy these and use them for summer homes. Otherwise, you know, you don't do it. We're now coming up on the island where we're going to have our barbecue lunch. And you can see it's re pretty remote out here. Here we are, we're approaching where we're going to be anchoring. Because that's what we're going to do. There's no docks or anything, we're just going to have to anchor out there. All the picnic tables that we're going to be using are starting to come into view. And there's the guy that's going to usher us in. Then you can see this, all this rays all over here in the sand. We're going to have to wade through them. We have to be very careful not to step on them because they are docile, but if you step on them, they may sting you and get you hurt. We're greeted by the band that's going to play the music for us while we have lunch. And you know what? This was an experience. Lunch is served. And naturally the people mob the food line like they are starving to death. You know, it's like they're not getting enough to eat aboard the ship. They have to come out and pig out over here all they can. I couldn't even film anything with all these people there, so I decided to come back later when everybody was finished and show you, film what the food was being served. This is what's left of the chicken after the mob got through demolishing it. And you know, it really was good, not, not bad at all. And now over here we have some fish. As you can see, they did a good job on it. And uh, naturally, down here we have sausages. They were all very, very good. This was the little pasta dish that uh, we could have had. And um, over, moved over here to the rice bowl, which you can have. And uh, then over here, this is the leftover salad. That's there, and the tomatoes. You can see they did a very good job on this stuff. And then uh, naturally, now we finally we got bread. After lunch, we went out to the reef. And this is where we got off the boat and swam with the, uh, the rays. Uh, you, you'll see them coming up very shortly. This is a stingray. You can tell because of the tail he has there. And you know, and if he rubs that tail against your body, you know it. It's really quite, quite rough. See how these stingrays are hovering around this native, and that is because he has fish to feed them. He's holding them in his hand. You know, these rays are not stupid. They know where the good food is. They're going to hang around this guy because they know they're going to they're going to get fed. And look at all the little fishes there. They, they know they're not going to get fed because they're too fast. And here comes two sharks. You see them in a second coming in. 
There they are. You know, and these sharks are really quite docile. They they really run away from sharks people. They're not away. attack you. You don't want to feed the sharks, even though they stay away from you. Because if you do, they have they go into a feeding frenzy. And you know, and when they start feeding on everything, you may get in the way. These stingrays, after being fed, the people started feeling them to see what they felt like. They're not slimy. They feel like fine velvet and are so soft and they love to be stroked. But you know, Pat, these things are really a funny fish. You see the black on top, their eyes are up on top. Their mouth is underneath, on the bottom, That's in the center. He never fine. sees what he's eating. I wonder how they make out. <laughs> That's a good, good question. <laughs> Go. In this segment, we learned that there are three types of stingrays. There is the, what's called the stingray, the eagle ray, and the monstock ray. The sharks that we see are the black tipped sharks because they have black tips on their fins and tails. This was a very interesting experience, spending this time with the rays. But you know what? It is time now to call it quits and go back to the ship and get ready for tomorrow for our next adventure. And what better way to end a beautiful day than with a beautiful, beautiful sunset. It is now the next day and as you can see the ship cannot dock at this island of Bora Bora. We have to come in by tender, which is what we're doing. We have arrived and now Pat's getting ready to get off the tender and start our adventure for the day. Our tour for today is a four-wheel drive, off-road vehicle tour of the entire island. And man, this was really quite an adventure. At times I was wondering why we were doing it. And this is why we take, made that rough ride up the hill so far. And it, Look at the sights once you are up here. It is well worth the ride. We see far and wide and look at the colorations of everything. The, the different blues out in the water and the greens. It's, it's just gorgeous. Well folks, take a look at what some of the roads look like that we came up on. I don't believe that we made it. This was a day in Bora Bora where the sky was just gorgeous. Look at those clouds. And we spent so much time here just admiring the sky and the sun, sunshine and the fresh air and the sand and the ocean on this very quiet beach. The rest of the, most of the trip, a great deal of it actually, was overcast and we didn't often see the sun, but here's a few clouds, well. The description of this trip that I read before we signed up said that we're going to be riding in a four-wheel drive uh, Jeep. Well, actually, it's nothing more than a four-wheel drive pickup truck with benches on each side, with no seat belts, nothing to hang on to. Fortunately for us, there was only 
six of us on this trip. So, you know, the person in the middle was really quite lucky. He got two bumpers on each side of him, on the upside and on the downside. Well, you know, otherwise you do like what this gentleman over here on the side of see, grab that rail there and hang on for dear life. Because part of this trip, you were climbing as much as a 45 degree angle up and down, which, you know, if you're not hanging on to something, you're going to go flying around. Well, it all turned out fine. We all made it and with no problems at all. And we were very happy for that. When we got out of our truck and walked around, this is the view that we had. I mean, this is more spectacular than the first one we saw. Um, but the, the, the views never, never stop. And coming up here, look at this tree. It's really not. It's a cell tower camouflaged as a tree. It looks pretty real, doesn't it? And you know, for every hill you climb, you have to go back down. And man, this is not much better. I'm glad that we only have one more to go. Now we're down on another beach and we needed uh, some time to relax and enjoy the thing to recover from the ride we are on. Because you know what folks, we have one more ride to go. And, if and uh, from past experience, I can't see this next climb being much better than the rest. According to a guide, this is the last hill that we're going to be climbing on this trip. This is it. I don't know if I could take much more of these. Man, if you want to call this a road, you've got a much better imagination than what I have. We're now on top of the last hill, and you can see here that there's this nice big cannon up here. This was, uh, this two of them actually, this one and then and another one. This was the one in better shape though. They were put in for the, uh, by the Allies in the Second World War to protect this island from an attack from maybe the, uh, the um, Japanese ships. But the Japanese ships couldn't come in here. The ships could only come in as as far as when you see that little uh, uh, barrel reef out there, here's a close-up of it, because the, it was too shallow beyond that to come in. So the ships have to stay out there. And that is the reason why they got these big monstrous cannons, because these cannons can shoot a, a, a projectile anywhere from 18 to 22 miles. And then they could reach the ships out there. So, but you know what? It never happened. The Japanese left this island alone, never got here. So the whole thing just laying there now for years and years and years, just decaying away. From the top of the hill, we are looking down on this ramp and we were wondering where that led to. Here are some huts. Evidently, that is a private access to those huts out in the water. Well, from here we go down the hill and we got one more stop to, to go to, which is a little place down below here that does tie-dyeing. And then you'll be amazed at what we saw. Because one part of it is unique, you can reproduce a second part of similar. After folding, just dip inside. Okay, let me show you that. Oh my goodness. Okay. Oh my goodness. Like that. Beautiful. So after paint, they put that inside the platform to dry. That's why we need to have the sun to make that. When it's raining, no possible to tie that. Well, Pat, 
we now got off the bus and we're ready to go back onto the tender to go back to the ship, which is right down there. Wasn't this a really full, full day we had today? It was really a busy day. <laughs> oh yes, that it has. Mm -hmm. yeah, but it started off very interesting first thing this morning when you got off the tender. Oh yes, my gosh, that was an experience. Why don't you tell the people what the, <laughs> the experience was? Well, here we go. Uh, we were getting off the tender. You just arrived at Bora Bora here, and uh, the agricultural inspectors were there to greet us because they had to do a job. So anyway, uh, as we were getting off, one of the inspectors came up to me and she said, will you do me a favor? And I said, uh, what is it? And she said, well, will you put, take this bundle and put it in your bag and then just walk through and go all the way past that dog up there and just keep going. Well, okay. Well, okay. well yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. Personally, I do think you look like a terrorist. That's why she picked on you. Oh, great. Thanks. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, so she put this bundle in my bag, and then we proceeded forward, as everybody else was doing. And Joe was just ahead of me. Yeah, just a few steps ahead of you. And I walked down there, and I... Went right past the door, the dog ignored me completely. Then you came up and the dog did not ignore you. That dog lunged at me and he stuck his nose right in this bag and just shook it up and rattled it around and he was pulling it away from him. He wanted to get at this thing. And of course I'm pulling away. I'm not letting him grab the bag because that's my yeah. stuff. Well, fortunately that dog handle finally pulled the dog away took him over the side and pet him said nice nice doggy and get him some treats and walked away with him and I can he, then I can continued uh, peacefully ahead however the uh, first in agricultural inspector came up real quick real quick afterward and uh, took the the uh, package out of the out of this and you don't know what was in that package it was what? A banana wrapped in a towel. Now, of course, the dog was supposed to do was exactly what he did. Yes, he did. And the thing is, uh, it was obvious to me that they were, they were looking for contraband with that. They don't want brought onto the island. And this was actually an exercise for the dog to see if he would do his job properly more than anything else. But on top of it, it was a lesson to me to be careful who, if somebody comes up and asks you to carry something for them, don't do it. Even an agricultural <laughs> inspector, unless you want an experience like this. Okay, well anyway, it was a unique experience, very few people experience it. Another thing you put in your bucket. It brought excitement for the morning. <laughs> that's okay. for sure. Let's let's go okay. and let's go back to the ship now. That uh, and you don't have to worry about a dog anymore. Well, that's true too. Okay, so, so we let's, go. Let's Thank you. Let's oh go. gosh. <laughs> Bye. Well, it's the next day, and we just got off the tender. It's another beautiful, gorgeous day. A little breezy, but quite warm. So Pat just got on the catamaran here to, and fought the mob and got me a seat where I could get at. Of course it was a little difficult for me to get in but she saved it for me so I, when I get in there I could sit down and enjoy the rest of the trip. Coming into view here on the right hand side is Bora. This is where we were yesterday the whole day and today we're moving on to the other Bora which is going to come into view very, very shortly here. There it is. That's the other island that's called Bora. You see that both islands are called Bora. Bora 1 and Bora 2. And that's when, where we get the name of Bora Bora. It makes sense, doesn't it? I guess it does.
we're supposed to be going out to a remote piece of land where we're going to be doing some uh, snorkeling. Well, maybe this is where it is. Looks like that. I know, but look, we're turning and we're going away in another end direction. Well, I don't know where we're going, but we'll soon find out. Well, it looks like we arrived. The only trouble is the piece of land that we're going to is approximately three to four feet underwater. Well, it makes sense if you're going to do snorkeling. Yes, this does seem to be a very unique experience of snorkeling right here in this very shallow water of the atoll. Oh, here comes the sharks. Naturally, we got to have sharks along whatever else we're going to see. And there's a lady right in the middle of the sharks. And you know what? They're, they're very docile and they're not even bothering her at all. They're just ignoring her. Oh, come on. Go down another, go down a few more steps. Go ahead. Look, you're going to touch the Monterey there. Stingray. My stingray, he felt like velvet. He did, huh? He, oh, yes. He was just so soft and just like velvet. <laughs> Feel good. <laughs> so was he... Ha <laughs> the thing is, he didn't hold still. Like yesterday, they were holding still, yeah. you know? He was kind of wiggling around like this. <laughs> he wouldn't stay put. Okay. And I could not touch the ground from the bottom step. Well, no, you had to step off. It was, it was about no, four feet deep. Off. You yeah. Had to jump off. And then you're wet up to here. <laughs> At this point, I gave Pat the first lesson on how to use my camera so that she, I could get in the water and she could film me. Well, she did a pretty good job of what she was doing there. Turn around. Well, we're now in the tender and on our way back to the boat after a long day of playing with the sharks and the uh, monterays. But you know, folks, as soon as you get past these barrier reefs here right now and yeah, we're out in the ocean, the water gets a little choppier. It, it's going to make it fun trying to get into the ship, as you shall see coming right up. That then that goes up and down about three feet three to four feet. So now Pat is in position, she's waiting for the tender to rise up to the ship level and then steps right in. These attendants are there to help you maintain your balance and wait until it's the correct time to step off into the boat. But you know what? If you are physically impaired, this is not something that you should try to do. We have a day at sea before we get to our next destination. So we're gonna take an opportunity here to show you a little bit about this ship. Uh, Pat and I are sitting up here in the garden room. And as you can see, there's the wall with all beautiful parrots on it. 
I'm going to show you some close-ups of some of these parrots, which are really quite, quite striking in color and very nice. One's nicer than the other. I don't know which one I like better. Here comes the biggest parrot of all, right here. Hi, Pat. How you doing? Oh, well, hi, Jill. I see you drop by <laughs> with your camera. And Pat sitting right here in front of what they call here the living wall. This is plants, live plants on the wall. And uh, Pat had to wait a while before she could sit in the chair here because the gardener was here manicuring this and watering it. Well, he's finished and she dove in the chair. Well, the interesting thing about the wall is you still don't ever get away from weeding. <laughs> you still have to dress, dress the plants. Okay. Now, yesterday we had a very interesting day. Swimming in the water with oh. um, stingrays, the stingrays, monorays, and the shark. And the shark, the, the black tip sharks. Yes. And uh, that was quite an experience. They don't feed the sharks because, of course, they have teeth and they'll start feeding on you if you're not careful. <laughs> but you do feed the stingrays and they're all over you because they are fun-loving and they want to be fed and they want to be stroked and petted. They love to be petted. Well, you know, they're really a funny animal. They're about three foot in diameter, they're pretty large. They got a dark top, and the eyes are on top, and their mouth is on the flat side underneath it. Well, and you'll find out that uh, they are very, very soft. Not at all slimy, not at all leathery, but like fine velvet. You would be just amazed how soft they are, like velvet. Well, you can put that another thing in your bucket. That, that you went swimming with rays and sharks. That's right. It's a new experience. This is a wonderful trip here in the South Pacific. And there's so many different things to do. And I'm sure we'll have a lot more experiences before the trip is over. Oh, I'm sure. I'm looking forward to more. But we've had quite a very amount of experiences and there's still more to come. Okay. Go back to your uh, coffee and... Just about it. Okay. And I'll leave you alone. So long. Okay. Bye. See you later. Being there's very, very few people up here in this top deck this hour, in the morning, I'm going to take the opportunity to film the more of these uh, living walls. And they, there's quite a few of them in the restaurant over here. And you can, you can see, they're really elaborate and they're really very nice. And um, I don't know whose idea it was, but I think it was a pretty good one. And this is what this place looks like in the nighttime. This is a magical place at nighttime. I didn't believe that the swimming pool area would be so different at nighttime. Look at the lights and the whole feel is just magical. And it looks like it would be a fun time to go swimming. I'm afraid you can't do that, Pat. They cover the pool with a net at night. Oh dear. Being it's late at night and nobody's up here in the, in the bathrooms, I took this opportunity to film this stuff that's in the bathroom, both men and women. This is a series of plates with body parts on it, all put together and hanging there to make a picture of a figurine. You gotta admit, this is really quite unique, and this is in the men's room. It's the same thing in the woman's room, I'll show, which I'm going to show you next. Okay. 
Now this is in the women's room. It's a pitch. It's the same thing, placed with man body parts on it, all put together and hanging there on a wall. And it really makes quite a, a showing. But you know what? I like the one that's hanging in the women in the men's room a lot better than the one that's hanging here in the women's room. Oh yes, you would. In case you were wondering, when we were upstairs, where all the people were, well, some of them. At, at dinner, and the rest of them are down here in the rotunda because there's a special show going on tonight for that for us, and they're all down here just waiting to get started. First, we started off with our band playing dance music for the people that are down here, and you can see they're enjoying themselves, listening to the music, and dancing to it. Now one of the escort decided to ask Pat if she wanted to dance. And of course Pat said, well sure, why not? So here she is having a great time dancing with the escort. But you know what folks, I haven't figured out yet how to hold the camera and dance with her. That's my next big project. Now Pat picked up some of these glow sticks and she's be keeping beat to the music as how more people are dancing. Hey Pat, are you having fun? This is the four piece band that uh, supplies all the music for all the dance lounges around the show. They certainly supply a good variety of dance music. They have no trouble filling all the lounges around this ship when they perform. Now it's showtime and we have uh, two couples doing demonstrating very fancy Latin dancing. Really very good. It is now time for the treat of the night. Our Russian violinist is going to entertain us. If you notice the violin that she's holding, it really isn't a violin. It's an electronic instrument. She's got two wires that comes out of this thing that goes to a transmitter, which is hidden someplace on her body. And from there, it transmits to a speaker amplifier. The sound that comes out of this thing is unbelievable. Now, sit back and enjoy this lady play the violin here. She is absolutely fabulous.
after a wonderful night of entertainment, we now moved on to our next destination, which is the Cook Islands. We just arrived at Kia Orana Island, which is part of the Cook Islands, where we see the Port Authority symbol left and the chain of 15 islands to the right. Hey Pat, tell me, are cooked islands better than raw ones? Well, you'll have to find out. Try them both ways and see. The flag shows that the Cook Islands are a uh, British possession and the 15 stars represent the islands. Our agenda for today is to ride out to the marina where we will get on our glass bottom boat. This is a very pleasant bus ride out to where we to the marina where we're going. But you know what? If you look at this, you'll see that this bus is riding on the wrong side of the street. I hope the other people know of that. I sure hope they see us coming. We arrive at the marina and we look straight ahead and see our glass bottom boat waiting for us. The people are starting to board it and now uh, as soon as we're all there, all, all arrived, of course a lot of people are in the restroom before we go out there, we'll be leaving. Okay, we're now all on the boat and we're on our way out to the reef we're going to go. It's going to take maybe about 15 minutes island time. Now island time can mean anywhere from 15 minutes to 2 hours. This is the way it works. We now arrived at the reef and we're anchored. And you're seeing some fish swim by. There's a couple of nice colored ones there. And then, you know, we'll see some more later on because I'm gonna give you close-ups of them. But in the meanwhile, this is what we saw. This is really a great thrill to be able to sit and watch from the glass bottom of the boat these beautiful close-ups of these fish. You almost want to drop a line and see if you can catch one of them for supper. Oh, yeah, that sounds like a pretty good idea. And you know, a lot of the people on the boat got in the water and went swimming with them. But they enjoyed it very, very much. After everybody got through snow clan and got back to the boat, we moving to another nice beautiful beach to where we're gonna be eating some fresh fresh food. In the meantime while we're traveling there enjoy the scenery. And there's another boat coming into view. That's just like the one we're on. Okay we arrived at the beach to where we're gonna be spending some maybe 15 minutes island time. We landed at Captain Thomas Lagoon Cruises, who is the owner of our boat. Hi, Pat. Hey, Pat, how you doing? You enjoying your lunch? Oh, this is excellent. And here is what is left for you. Oh, gee, thank you. Is that all that's left? You it, mean you ate everything already? No, but the whole lunch was for, made of uh, fruit. Hey, you know, any more fruit and we're going to be in trouble. <laughs> you can believe that. <laughs> We're now back on the boat now, going back to the marina, and our guides are serenading us with some nice little music. And you know, this has been one great day, and we had a wonderful time. So far, we have had a very good time on this trip. But you know what, folks? We only have one stop left, Auckland, New Zealand. That's where we're going next.
now in Auckland, New Zealand, and tomorrow we go home. So in the fact that we had here showed this jet board ride with all these people sitting there with shorts and uh, t-shirts. So I said, hmm, that looks pretty good. Let's give it a try. How bad can it be? Well, we found out that uh, this is not exactly the way you get dressed on this boat. The first thing they did was hand us raincoats that we put on with a hood. We buttoned at the neck and uh, at the wrist and it went all the way to the ground. And we had life jackets underneath that, naturally. Then I thought something was funny when we had to sign a waiver to get on this boat and go for a thing, relieved, relieving them of all liability. So I said, hmm, what are we signing up for? Maybe this is more than what we can, we thought it would be. But uh, let's do it anyway. You know, you only live once. So we did, we got on there and we went on this boat. We're sitting there and the captain starts the engine up and I, you know, I've been around the racing world long enough to recognize an engine that has full race cams in it, the way the thing is, was running. And I said, oh my God, what did we sign up for? This thing supposedly generates a thousand horsepower and uh, this is not an engine that red lines at 7,000 RPM normally. This engine is full race and it's capable of doing 10,000 plus RPMs. I said, okay, let's hang on and see how it goes. Pat and I were one of the first ones to the boat over here. And Pat says, hey, look at this back row. It's raised up higher than the rest. We can see over everywhere. Let's take that one, which we did. That way really was a poor choice, and I'll tell you why later. But anyway, we got in the boat and off we went. Now, they advertise on a pamphlet this boat reaches speeds of 50 knots plus. Now, 50 knots plus it, it translates to a little over 60 miles an hour on, on, on the border. So I figured, ah, you know, Pat's used to riding around in my little sports car, and uh, when I do plus 85, 90 plus miles an hour, so this shouldn't bother her at all. But you know what? 60 miles an hour on water is a lot, lot faster, feels a lot, lot faster than um, 90 plus miles in a car. He gets this thing down at full speed and then kills the speed and throws the boat into a 360 and he does donuts with it. Now the first time around you get move up at a real big wave and then they come around the second time and the people in the last two rows get drenched. But that's the worst place in a boat you can sit. And then that's not good enough so he does it again in the opposite direction and drenches the other side of the boat. So everybody gets it done equally and this went on for about a half hour. Hey Pat, tell me, what you think of this ride that we had just on? Well, that was the wildest ride I have ever been on. Worse than a fucking Bronco. Yeah, well, you know what? This is something you can put in your bucket as being done. Well, I don't know. I might try it again sometime if I feel like it. <laughs> Here I am. I, I think I look like a drowned rat. What do you think, Pat? Well, I don't know about your looking like a drowned rat, but you sure feel like a drowned rat. Yeah, and you know what? This uh, sweatshirt I'm wearing is my go-home clothes for tomorrow. Uh-oh. You know, Pat, your clothes are wet too, so we say get back to the ship and get ready for two so we can go home tomorrow. Well, folks, and so we'll say goodbye. Okay. Goodbye, people, and you know what? We'll be seeing you again in the very near future.